In cha cha cha, I find it very, very important that you can distinguish between an action and a reaction of the body. Because the construction of the cha 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 is so that if we walk on two, or I would say one, two, three, is a walk and the four and is something else. Now the one, two, three has the walk, you could think a bit like the rumba, but it is a lot faster because in the cha-cha-cha we want to be able to see also with the beat of the cha-cha-cha what the body action is doing. So whereas in a rumba, Hannah, would you walk two, three, four, one? Two and the three and the four and one and. Now if you start on the two. Now on that two, the hip action in the rumba is theoretically supposed to start on the and count. I said theoretically. And count. Again, it depends on the dance. It depends on how fast your body weight comes to the certain balance point of your body so that you are able to let that inclination of the pelvic bone start to occur. So very often we would say in Ramba that we walk on the body foot and the hip on the and. In Cha Cha Cha, in order to help dancers in teaching, we very often say foot, hip together. Or in any case, earlier than what is the case in the rumba, not just on an and. So, if you would walk, Hannah, a one, two, three, cha cha, one, two, three, four, and, okay? And one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two. Okay, thank you. Now, what I'm talking about here, if we talk about action and reaction, obviously once there is a walk, like on the one, two, three, there is a walk with the full weight and the hip action coming on it. The lockstep, which in theory technique says that you are going from whatever you've been on your three, over the four and the pelvic section will come to neutral. Now, coming to neutral means somewhere here. Now, of course, any good dancer will interpret that coming neutral with an awareness of a reaction coming out of the walk that was on your three. Now, of course, then what is very, very important that the moment the lady or anybody of the dancers had been in the locking position, just stop in the locking position, Hannah. So she has slightly flexed knees. They are tucked into each other. Now, coming out of a lock, the back leg straightening without lowering the heel, going in the direction in the direction of the next walk, that is the action. And what might occur in the body is a reaction of that leg action. We see so many people getting into a split-weighted position in order to try and do an... Just put your hip back now. There trying to get the hip action deliberately going out of it. If you try to just use your leg action, and in theory, your reaction is not only hip, it's your whole body coming out of that. 
Plus, it is very, very important. Can we have some cha-cha music, please? Then you would see the timing of that ant. I want to see that reaction in a person's body. Okay, okay Hannah. One, two, three, four. Reaction one, two, three, four. Reaction one, two, three, four. Reaction one, and two, and three, and four. Thank you, Hannah. talk about is how to create the speed combined with the musicality in a characteristic way of cha-cha-cha. What we think is the most important for the dancer to accomplish and to understand and learn and train is to get the perfect uh, mix between the speed of a leg action which is the definition from the knee to the foot which has a certain speed and an activity and clarity that becomes a uh, total clear in the timing of the music. So if we prioritize that, we have a foot speed and then we have a continuation in the upper body. That contrast between the foot arriving super fast and isolated and then a body that continues through that is what we think is the most magical thing about Cha Cha Cha. So it has a slickness and activity but still a continu continu continuity in the body. And uh, I would like to talk about two different actions which we feel is very, very important to characterize the cha-cha-cha. We have the walking action, which is a full beat action, where we have a hip action and a work from the body, dancing the hip first in pendulum, then in rotation, a spine which is a positive forward, and kept lifted between uh, the hip area and the rib cage area. So we have a lift here in order to free up movement. And therefore we have a lot of activity close to the spine because we are lifted up. We pendulum, we rotate, and now at the right time the foot is defining the step with a, f a leg straightening from the knee to the foot and it rolls under you as a scooping action. Zip. So the foot is placed, but that transition and that arrival is invisible in the upper body. So that is timed perfectly in connection to the weight change. So I flick the foot and I continue my body weight through like there's no effort in this speed, in speed of the foot. This is Cuban motion, slickness of knees and body volume without external over motivation, please. Good luck, Sergei. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Oh, so nice to have a man around the house. Someone sweet who's glad he found you who will put his arm When I get this combination of foot speed and body action connected, together in the right combination. Then I can make a choice to create hip speed as well when I, wa when I choose to. So the first thing is to understand the timing of the hip, how is it going and when is it going. And we have in the duration of the actual step we have when the foot is arriving I have a half beat to take my, my hip through center starting to pendulum. Then I have a quarter beat to finish the pendulum and to start rotating on the last quarter. So we define it as half, quarter, quarter. And then I can choose to melt it together, blend it. I can choose to have an aggressive attitude towards the hip action. But it's all an artistic choice. But you can see if the dancer is functioning through the body with pendulum and rotation combined with foot uh, placement. 
if that is run seamlessly and you can look at the back of the dancer you can see on the back that it's actually all the time effortless and has a freedom on the outside the second action we are concerned about in the cha-cha-cha which we need to characterize the cha-cha is the stepping action and it's very important to understand that the stepping action is a total different concept than a walking action it is a step meaning that my foot is placed and I have a reaction in the body and I do not carry full weight to the leg and I do not make a hip action on that step so a stepping action becomes a very sharp a very fast and very clearly defined difference from the walking action and therefore a great dancer and one who has accomplished a lot of skill has uh, noticed and can control and show the difference between a full beat and a walking action and the contrast in the stepping action and then the dancing of the cha-cha-cha becomes dynamic without an exterior trying to create effect on the outside so the, the contrast is that we do full action and uh, two and uh, three and uh. now the cha cha uh, cha uh, cha <laughs> First thing, you have to really learn how to practice, how to really practice to, uh, to develop yourself. What? The motion and the movement in the back so nice and in the hips. So nice to have a man around the house. Oh, so nice to have a man around the house. Someone sweet who's like he found you who will put his arms around you and his kisses just astound you it's so nice oh a house is just a house without a man he's the necessary evil in your plan there are many things about him 